Ren. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ren. And Alan, I seen that. Cabin in the Woods. It's the first time I've seen this. Last time we did a podcast together, you told me this was one of your favorites. Well, are you, how, how, how are we allowed to peel back the curtain here? No. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't know what they mean, but... Initially, we were going to do uh, yeah, Ridiculous yeah, yeah. Six. Yes. And I didn't want to do that at all, <laughs> but I was going to do it because I... It, that could lead to a fun discussion. Yeah. But then I watched... You, you, you poor soul, you watched the whole movie. I did watch the whole movie. I watched the first 10 minutes, and then I paused the movie, and then I saw that there was an hour and 50 minutes left, and, and I, I was shocked. I was upset. <laughs> okay, so how far did you get into it? When, when did you pause the movie? <laughs> oh, my God. Because um, so 10 Adam, minutes, that would be before Rob Schneider even got into the movie, right? Yeah, oh, what a comical genius Rob Schneider is. This is actually, he was the least, this was the least annoying he has been in a movie. But that was because he had a donkey that had diarrhea, and that was his That's, annoying trait. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I, I watched enough of the movie to see that Adam Sandler has magical, mystical Indian powers. Yes. Which. Which they don't explain. He's just, he's just that good. Okay. You're talking about when he throws the flower in the air and can like throw knives all over the place. Yeah, he threw. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, it's, I don't think they explain that. It's not like he's he's not like a superhero. He's just super amazing. That, that's Adam Sandler for you. Super amazing. That's how I would describe him. <laughs> Awful. It was bad. Yeah. So we actually even further behind the curtain. We were going to do that two weeks ago. Yeah. And then, let's see, I think I got sick first, and then you were working on a video the next week. Yeah, the Fortnite. And so when it came up that we were going to do, talk about that today, I was like, man, I don't, I don't remember that movie well enough, and I might have to watch it again if I really want to talk about it. And that sounded terrible. <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine rewatching that stupid movie. Uh, and so that's when Cabin of the Woods came back into my mind, and you you had told me to watch it. And I hadn't seen it yet. And How so, much yeah, did you that. know about Cabin in the Woods? Nothing. That's probably for re- the best. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I it uh, I was I was kind of surprised how much I liked it, yep. and kind of surprised how disappointed I was with the end. Um, how based. How is that disappointing? Um, So, the end, we can just, I don't think anyone's going to care about spoilers for this movie. It's a couple of years old. But uh, the end is, it kind of turns into a generic horror movie. I don't think so. There are... No? Everything uh, about it, I think, is not generic. I guess you could say... No, no, I think up until the end, up until they get to the... uh, the old gods. Yeah. The the motivation for the movie is what turned it into a generic horror movie. Everything else was so creative and like so... Um, what do you mean the motivation? So, okay. So the premise of the movie is all horror movies take place in this universe, right? I, uh, yeah. I, I guess like, you, could, you could look at it that way. Loosely. And there's people who are controlling all of the events so they're like like the game makers from hunger games almost puppeteers puppeteers puppet masters and they are they're getting people to be sacrifices to appease the old gods so they bring them in and they have to go through step by step of a certain formula to appease the old god which is the formulaic horror movie tropes all that stuff I thought was great. I, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the commentary on it. I really enjoyed them pointing out like, yeah, this happens all the time. This doesn't make sense. This is dumb. Yeah. Like all that stuff was great. But the motivation that they gave to why that was happening, why the puppeteers were doing it, was that the old gods were going to destroy the earth. 
And at that point, I was like, ah, it's kind of, it kind of missed the landing for me on that. What if I told you that um, the uh, old gods are actually a metaphor? Is the audience. Yes, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty pretty advanced metaphor, but... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I thought I thought it was creative. Like, I, I thought that was a good idea of like, if you don't have all this stuff happen, people are going to be upset and destroy the movie or bash the movie, right? Yeah, like, that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Um, and I, I got it, but it just felt like I don't know. I felt like everything was so creative, and the end was kind of it fell flat for me personally. I don't know. What do you think? For me, I didn't know much going in. I saw this opening day in the theater. Oh, okay. As yeah. I tend to do. Did and you see the trailers or anything? The, was it? I, I saw. Was it sold it, as a horror movie? It was sold as a horror movie with maybe a little something else is going on here, but okay. they didn't really ever show you anything. So I, I didn't know where the movie was going to go or what was going to happen when I watched it. But when I when they get to the scene where they are betting on what horrors the teens will unleash in the cabin yes mm-hmm. and the, the you see on the whiteboard all the options that are there yeah when i saw that i thought to myself i want to see all those come out and kill everybody at once <laughs> that, that was <laughs> yeah. literally what i wanted to see i was and that's what i got yeah and yeah i mean i i love this movie it's one of my favorites so yeah it, it, it reminded me a lot of American Vandal. Have you watched that yet on Netflix? Oh, the one where the where Dylan did 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 not spray a bunch of spray paint a bunch of penises on people's cars? Yes. Yeah, I've seen that. That so that is a um it's like a soft parody. I don't even know what to call it. Like cuz it's not to me parody is Leslie Nielsen, scary movie movies, yeah. those type of things where it's like almost direct direct scene ripoffs you know like straight yeah. up i guess this is more satire i don't and, think uh, i would even call it that yeah it's it because it it takes it it does it earnestly right it, it it is telling a story but it's using the form as the joke and it's it's so it's so creative and it seems like they really appreciate the style right with cavern of the woods it seems like they really understand horror movies and yeah. you know are, are are paying respect while they're tearing it apart. Yeah, they they've said that it came from a place of love and hate for that movie. Yeah. And it definitely shows. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, it's I, I was yeah, like I said, I was really surprised how much I enjoyed it and then a little disappointed with the ending. I um I I'm fine with the ending. Yeah. What do you mean? Like this? You you said you're disappointed. What are you disappointed with? The hand coming out, or what you talked about earlier? Yeah, just kind of what I talked about earlier about the the motivation, the the logic behind why they were doing everything. I was hoping for something a little bit more. More than just uh, old gods. Yeah, yeah, because it's it just kind of like oh, magic. That's why we're doing this. Um, I kind of, in the middle, I expected it to be, uh, do you watch The Good Place? Yeah, I've seen all of The Good Place, which is, um, thanks for embarrassing me on your video, but yeah, I watch it. What I do, I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? What, I don't remember what I did. You embarrassed me by, by making me admit that I've watched The Good Place. Oh, this video. I gotcha. Because I made a video on the good place, so I was like, yeah, I, I saw that. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember saying anything about writing on that. Uh, yeah, and so I thought, oh, maybe it's gonna be like that. Like these are angels or demons who are manipulating everything or something like that. Not that that would be a better ending or a better story, or that I'm disappointed that that didn't happen. I was just thinking, like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Where you have these, you know, demons who are manipulating things to happen opposed to actual just people i think old ancient gods is a perfectly perfectly fine to be yeah honest. no i i think it's fine I, I don't really have a problem with it it just felt like everything else was such a good commentary on everything mm. where that kind of just turned into 
Like if that happened in a, a normal horror movie that wasn't as creative as this, it wasn't as pointing things out, you wouldn't really think anything of it. Like if it was just a, a normal horror? Yeah. Like if if zombies came out and were attacking them and you find out, that, oh, they needed to be sacrificed or the old gods were going to come and destroy everything. Yeah. You'd be like, what? yeah, that, okay. It, if it came out of nowhere in the climax, you'd be like, wait, what? Well, yeah, but I, you would have to obviously build it up, but yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I don't have you, any issues with the movie. Were you going to ask me? Uh, I was just going to say, what did you think of the scene where they set up all the different uh, trinkets? Oh, I love that. That's a total... Uh, a lot of the movie was an homage to Evil Dead, as you okay. can probably tell. The cabin yeah. itself looks like Evil Dead. The cellar, the way the cellar flips up, they go down in the cellar and read the book. Yeah. I mean, come on. There, there, <laughs> um, I I like that scene because it, especially on your first time through, it gets your imagination going. Like, what is all this stuff? And you know, what what does any of it mean? And you can see them all sort of getting ready to unleash something. Yeah. The, the, everybody's interest is piqued by something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was. It was a perfect example of what happens in all these other movies. Like, where, why would you go down there in the first place? You know, like, yeah. you're in a creepy cabin and this thing happens and you go down there and there's all this crazy stuff. And then it's just so funny the way everyone's like jumping to something instantly. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would do that in real life. Maybe I would. I wouldn't. If, I the, if, the, bot, if the cellar door flipped open at the cabin yeah. in the woods I was at, I would, shh. No, no, I'm gone. But <laughs> I love how they do that. They explain like, it's basically the whole movie is an explanation for, here's why everybody in a horror movie ever has been an idiot throughout the whole movie. Yeah. And it's like, because they're pumping chemicals in. Tr- yeah. Changing the decisions that the uh, people make. Put, putting chemicals in their hair dye and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> which which I love that cuz I love horror me and my girlfriend I, yeah. we love horror and it's it was so good to see the the movie is so fresh it just feels yeah. so creative yeah i i also i kind of took it the uh, the other way with that where it's um not only why it happened but something like this would have to happen for people to make these dumb choices you know like the when he's like hey we need to all stick together and the yeah. guys are like <laughs> we gotta split yeah. them up you know yeah. like obviously you would stay together why would you ever split up or why would you drop your knife other than getting shocked you yeah. know have an electric shock hit your hand or just all those small things um where they had to intervene to get them to do what they wanted it was super creative you know what i know you've you like daredevil right I do. The first season. The least. first season of Daredevil. The showrunner of the first season of Daredevil it was the director and writer of Cabin in the Woods. Oh, was it Drew Goddard? Yeah, Drew Goddard. 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 Yeah. Just a little uh, little tidbit for you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Daredevil 1 is is phenomenal. Yeah. It's really good. And it's kind of sad <laughs> when you look at everything of, else. Season 2 was good, and then it... Yeah. It it dropped when they had yeah. to introduce the hand. Is that what it is? Yeah, the hand, right? The hand. Yeah, yeah. The the Ninja Turtles is the name foot. I ever heard? <laughs> is it is it the foot in Ninja Turtles? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, they're make they're pointing fun at the uh, Marvel stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. What's his name? Luke Cage season two is coming out I, next I week. Could, I think. Couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> it is coming it's um, fast approaching every time oh, i go on man. netflix I, it wants me to know and it makes sure i know i still haven't even finished jessica jones yet i'm never gonna the second one ever it's born yeah uh scary movies though what what's your favorite scary movie outside of cabin in the woods uh honestly I, I wouldn't say this is a scary movie would you no i i i don't th- i think you'd have to there, be really i get What's the opposite of desensitized? Sensitized? You'd have to be... Uh, this would have innocent? to be... Innocent, yeah. This would have to be your first horror movie. 
Yeah. To, to really yeah, there's too much scared. levity to yeah. build tension. But but it's per- like because why it works so well is because they play it straight. These people yes don't know they're in a horror movie, but the people in the control room know. Yeah, and I love the the uh, the bouncing between you got this generic as hell horror plot with this really <laughs> truly terrible dialogue. When yeah, the, when the kids are flirting, but then you snap to the people at the lab and they are it's witty and it's fun and it's it's next level and then yeah you go back and forth between that and then they they mesh together yes but we friend, also have the stoner yeah who is aware that everything's messed up like there's the one line where he's like why is this guy i don't remember what he says but basically why is this guy acting like a bro he's a, a physics major he's never acted like this before why is he calling this guy yeah. a nerd or whatever you know like clearly something's wrong and then when the the blonde girl is like dancing in front of the fireplace and it cuts to everyone sitting on the couch other than her boyfriend or just all like why is this happening like so uncomfortable yeah there's just like so many moments like that where the things that you would just kind of overlook when you watch a horror movie because it happens. They show so their much. reactions. Yeah. Yeah. They show they show their reactions and it's like, oh yeah, that that doesn't make sense. <laughs> why would that happen? Why why would the one of the girls just dance for everyone? Yeah. And it's oh, it was great. I also I also really appreciated the uh the lack of nudity in this. Yeah. Um like cause they, they kept leading up to it, like building up to it. And that's one of the things in horror movies that always feels like it doesn't need to uh, be gratuitous. there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like when he's looking at her through the uh, one way mirror, the two way mirror, one way mirror, two way, one way, one way. And uh, he bangs on the door like, Hey, don't, don't take off your clothes. It's like, yeah, that's a respectable thing. Like, yeah, maybe that should be the message, you know? I, I like the scene when, the uh chris hemsworth is about to bang his girlfriend and uh-huh. she and she's like no 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 don't don't take off my shirt or whatever and he yeah he's like what what do you mean we're all alone here and then it cuts to a hundred scientists watching the- <laughs> yeah. i love that oh man the the scientists were actually really funny yeah the they use them really well i think it could have gotten old quickly yeah but it, it never felt played out they had a lot of charisma Mm-hmm. And it had, you know, the perfect, like, they had the newbie there, the the uh, security guard, so that you Who could... is that? What's his name? Do you know? No. What is he in? Uh, he's he's in Cabin in the Woods. That's about oh, it. Oh, that's where I know him from. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the classic writing trick where you have somebody... He's the Ernie Hudson, right? And I'm not saying that because he's black, all right? I'm, I saying I'm that not sure who Ernie Hudson is. Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters. Is where you put a, oh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. a new yeah. character in that has no idea about yes. what's going on in the movie, so that somebody in the movie can explain the plot of the movie to that guy, so that it doesn't yeah. seem like they're explaining it to the audience. Yeah, so it's a that's why I call him the Ernie Hudson. Honest. Yeah. You ever watch Arrow? No, that's all the characters. No. There's so many Arrow. characters. I was watching it the other day, and there's a scene where five people are standing wait, around the computer. Wait, wait, why are you watching Arrow? God, I feel I feel invested. I feel like <laughs> you know my dad I've, watches Arrow. And, does he? Um, we don't we don't speak. <laughs> it's really bad. But there, <laughs> there's five people standing around a computer, and one of them is like saying computer words. Uh-huh. One person is like translating it for the group, and then there's just two other the two other people are like, "What? Can you say that in English? That doesn't make sense." Just the dumbest people, just so they can explain. Yeah. their fancy words that they already explained and it's like why why not just cut that out why not just explain what's happening <sighs> well like clearly uh <laughs> joss whedon and drew goddard are better writers than the staff of arrow i uh, maybe that's there's a potential are you also watching the what is it called is it like black lightning or something I'm now watching Black Lightning. Is that Flash really what it's and Arrow called? are the only ones that I'm caught up? Yeah, Black Lightning. My dad watches Flash also, and he co- constantly complains about the Flash. He's like, always like, the Flash never uses his powers properly. I guess like there'll be a guy with his gun to the Flash and be like, "You're done for, Flash." 
and the Flash doesn't like zip to him and get the gun and go back. Is that the case? Is that true? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty true. It's it's. Okay. I mean, everything, every plot device in those shows are is very convenient. Oh, like how did you, you start? How did you start watching? Well, I, we started watching season one of Arrow when it came out, and actually, season one is pretty good. That's what my dad it's, tells me. Yeah, like it's, Batman it's, Begins, good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe in terms of, oh, in terms close. of television. I, in terms of television, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's dark, right? Like okay. he's actually killing people and like conflicted about what he's doing and uh-huh. like struggling and has a lot of opposition. And now it's a cartoon. Now it's a cartoon. Now it's turned into superhero, the OC. Wow. That's quite a combo. Superhero, <laughs> the OC. I've never heard yes. that. That's it. It sums it up almost perfectly. Okay. Yeah. So. If you like the OC and you like superheroes, then this show's for you. But you asked me earlier, what's my favorite horror movie? Yes. I'm going to have to... Uh, it's it's going to be a basic answer in the years to come, I think. But I'm honestly... one one of I got a couple. One of them's going to have of to wax. be hereditary. I haven't seen that yet. I'm you not going to say anything that, because it's, find it's anything a new about. movie. It's like two weeks old. If you haven't seen it, don't get it overhyped. It's getting insanely overhyped right now. As with any yeah, movie. Yeah, everyone, yeah. It's just... Everyone seems to love it. it and, it's uh, good, but it's not yeah. going to change your life. It's not going to ch- change the world. It's just a solid movie. Mm. People are blowing it out of proportion because that's what they like to do. But... Yeah. If, if 10 I, out of 10. Honestly, yeah, 10 out of 10. If I couldn't choose Hereditary... I would choose House of Wax because Paris Hilton <laughs> is just enrapturing in that movie. Her performance. It's actually its actually not that bad. Have it's you got, seen it? Uh, I saw it when, when it came on HBO when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, and that was it. I, w- I saw it in the theater. I saw it in the dollar theater. So it was out the for... The dollar theater. Y- yeah. Yeah. Do you have one? Yeah, we do actually. It's inside so of the it's casino. Like, here <laughs> it's in between the initial release and the dvd release yeah or the, sometimes at the time it's out VHS, on dvd yeah, yeah yeah um and so i think i saw it there and it, it it's not good mm-hmm. but it's way better than it should be like there's definitely way worse horror movies than house of wax yeah like i gotta imagine uh Quigi, Ouija, whatever however you say that is worse or uh what was that one that just came out unfriended with the uh unfriended oh the, or truth, truth or dare, or dare. truth or dare <laughs> I, I saw that in the theater let me tell you something uh, i went because me and kim thought it was going to be funny because how could yeah. I, but it wasn't yeah it's was earnest right like they were serious about it it was truthful and oh. daring <laughs> but it was so bland yeah it, it's not funny it's just 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 right in the middle just nothing yeah yeah flatline right which if 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 it was a which means you're dead all right the movie sucked <laughs> but honestly if if i couldn't choose hereditary for a horror movie yeah. there's a little a japanese movie called no roy have you heard of it no i love no roy um it's like a fake documentary. I guess you could call it found footage. But okay. they, they pull footage or clips from TV shows in Japan, fake TV shows for the purpose of the movie. Yeah. And they made it feel pretty real. It's like mm. a documentarian is investigating this like village where a demon has been... Well, he doesn't know it's a demon yet, but... It's, you know, demonic things are happening at, in this yeah. village and he gets involved and he's documenting it for a movie. And uh, it's it's properly spooky, I thought. I haven't seen it in like eight years, but I've seen it twice and I, I liked it both times a, a lot. And I... Yeah. It's it's spelled N-O-I-R-O-I and it, I believe the director of The Grudge did this movie. Okay. And I would recommend checking it out. It's at least worth checking out if if it hasn't yeah. aged well, because there is some CG in there that I know 
has an H2O, <laughs> but it's a fantastic yeah. little spooker. Horror movies kind of have to be practical. Yeah. The effects. Yeah. Or it just it falls apart really quick. There's some bad CG in Cabin. The eagle. Yes. Yeah. The, that flies into the grid. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah, there's quite a few. When it came out, it didn't look good. But no, this movie was shelved for like two years after they finished it. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you know why? I don't. Oh, I think it was because Lionsgate uh, or MGM or something like that, like went bankrupt. So okay. the rights to this movie were tied up with that. And then, yeah. then it was just all about waiting for the right time to release it. Because this was, it's got Chris Hemsworth in it. And, yeah. and this is before he was famous. Like this, they filmed this before they even filmed the first Thor. And yeah. He, so yeah. this was in between his soap opera and Does he, is he in a soap? Thor. Yeah, I think it was a soap. It was it was like maybe it was one of like those CW soaps, but he was definitely mm. he had like long beach hair. Oh yeah. And was always shirtless and stuff. Beautiful. Like that. Beautiful man. Yeah. He is that gorgeous. Guy. That guy is cougar bait, for real. <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. I forgot your shirt. <laughs> yeah. This is the debut of the shirt. I was like, why Why would you say that? <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about yeah, you? No, What's your favorite uh, horror movie? Apart from I'm not, Cabin. I'm not a big horror fan. I, I've told what? the story a few times. No, sorry. I got to take it back. It's not No Roy. It's Evil oh. Dead. I love Evil Dead. Everybody knows that. Okay. All right. Go on. <laughs> um, I've told the story a few times on the podcast, but I don't know if I've told you. When I was nope. like five, my grandfather put on a child's play for me and oh, my okay. cousins, and it terrified me. Right. I was so scared. I was way too young. Uh, there was a doll in my bedroom that looked just like the. Uh, yeah. I, like I can't even remember. Yeah, I, whatever the actual name is. Okay. Uh, and it terrified me. It made me so scared. Um, How did you feel about Toy just, Story when you were? When I was a kid, it didn't yeah. bother me. Okay. But uh, I was. I just assumed I hated horror movies. And so I never watched them when I was younger. And then by the time I, like, I, I, honestly, I think House of Wax was kind of the first one I saw since chucky okay growing up like that it was from chucky at five to whenever house of wax came out okay and then <laughs> and then at that point uh anytime i saw him i was just like oh these aren't scary yeah. these aren't very good you know like i wasn't i wasn't uh, uh innocent enough to actually be afraid of them and so okay they never they never really stressed me out so I, i've never been a huge fan uh but I would have to say House of Wax. The scariest <laughs> movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I okay. I didn't anticipate to talk about House of Wax nearly this much. I don't remember any... I remember the climax <laughs> where the, the House of Wax is melting. Uh, yeah, I think they burn it down, maybe. Yeah, somehow the wax uh, is flammable. You like, know. I think Zodiac was scary, but it wasn't satisfying. I, uh, was it David the, Fincher? Zodiac was on in the background while my dad watched mm. it and got upset at it. So <laughs> that's my experience with that movie. I feel like me and your dad would get along. Yeah. Why was he upset about it? I don't remember, but he, he yeah. was, I think, unsatisfied with the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't, they, they, don't, I mean, they don't know who the Zodiac Killer was, so the movie was like, gave you three or four different options. Oh, so and it's like decide yourself. Kind of, yeah. Oh, no thanks. Yeah, no thanks. And uh, yeah, so it was, I don't know. It, it's fine. It's interesting. It's kind of really slow and long. It's three yeah. hours, right? I think so. Three maybe. hours of Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal's and in that, right? It, That's the one where he complained yes. about the director. Maybe. Because they um, would do like a hundred takes of a scene and the d director would say, why don't you just go ahead and delete the first half, the first 50 takes we did, like right in front of Jake Gyllenhaal, and he lost it. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, horror movies, I don't know. Like I saw like Blair Witch uh, found footage movies are terrible. Yeah. Ghost movies aren't scary. Like I don't, I don't get lost in the stories very well because they're like so unbelievable. Okay. That I'm like, oh, this isn't scary. Um, I would 
really, really, really be interested to see what you think of Hereditary. Yeah, because yeah, I'm excited to see it. Don't be excited. I, oh, I'm. Don't be excited. I'm blase to see it. There you go. Interested <laughs> to see it because you're gonna go yeah, in. It, you're gonna feel pumped up that the titles cards gonna say Hereditary, and you're gonna be in the theater <laughs> clapping and cheering. Yeah, and um, my fists. Trust me, that's Both not what them. you want to be doing. For the, oh, you don't. All right. You're gonna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh-huh. me and Kim are definite. We love horror, and um, she loved Hereditary as well, and Cabin. We 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 see as much horror as possible, but we know what to avoid. Like, uh, yeah. we didn't see Winchester, but yeah, Paranormal Activity bad. Three is is really good. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, but it's. Uh, I've seen I the first two. Wait, I think it's I th- five th- or four. I think it's actually five because it's the one where the the Mexican kid has has the camera, Mexican. and like someone in his, it's all in Spanish, right? In his barrio is like, got something going on with the demon. It's so funny to why they did that was because it was doing so well <laughs> it, with yeah with Mexican speakers. So they're like, <laughs> let's let's just do it all in Spanish. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, half of it was in Spanish, and like the there's a scene where the Simon I think it's says gets possessed. cultural appropriation on maybe on their part they He's just inside that Simon says <laughs> azul verde oh my god like the Simon says is like lighting up and they're all freaking out <laughs> it's it's so dumb it was I, a fun I movie. really did not enjoy my buddy I, I watched paranormal one with my friend who said this is the scariest movie I've ever seen it kept oh, me up come on. for days right after I watched it and I hear stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, man, maybe this is going to be scary. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, I get nervous, and, and then I watch sleep. it, and I'm just like, are you serious? Yeah. Like, w- I spent an hour of my life waiting for a door to move an inch? Yeah, yeah. That's like, the movie. But do I, you, uh, I fell do asleep you believe during in Nightmare on Elm Street. Just a little oh, tidbit. Did you have a nightmare? No, I happened? fell asleep in the hotel. Oh. Perfectly fine. Nothing. No emotions. I was hope I was hoping Freddy Krueger chased you in that dream. No. That's the best way that story should end. Do I believe in ghosts? Yes. We don't talk about it. No? Uh I guess I don't know. I mean there's no yeah. I haven't seen any. Do you myself. believe I guess do you believe ghost stories when people like Never. I don't believe any ghost story. Yeah. I they're mean, all they're all kind of crazy and it's all with, friend of a friend right except yes. mm-hmm. apparently my grandma had a ghost story um but as i say this it's you know you're getting it from a third party and not from her herself but yeah she said uh-huh. she saw a ghost going around her living room blessing like all the furniture and then they attribute that to that's the reason everybody in my family lives so long so I have a nice, just there you go. long, 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 long. Do you life have to have to forward to have a piece of that furniture though? I'm sure I've sat in it. Oh, okay. It just rubs off. So if I come over and visit and sit in one of those furniture, am I good or is it just a blood thing? I, I don't know, man. But if what you're if you're adopted? Does that now does you're it done. transfer? You're done. Oh, <laughs> you're done for. Um, yeah, I, I was actually listening to the H3 podcast. Yeah. Um, and with Tom Segura. Did you listen to that one? I didn't hear the whole one with Tom Segura, but I heard. They talk about it. They talk about ghost stories at the end, and they, yeah. they made a, a fascinating point of if someone tells a ghost story to someone who doesn't believe, generally it kind of kills the ghost story. If you're like, oh, man, last night yeah. I heard this creaking, and I, I, I think it's a ghost. And someone's like, no, it's not a ghost. Mm-hmm. the story kind of dies but if you tell it to someone who is going to like throw gas on that fire then the story grows and every time you tell it it gets bigger and bigger and bigger where it's like you just start believing your own lies yeah and like yeah and then the ghost picked me up and carried me upstairs and gets all crazy you know there's always a logical explanation always yeah yeah 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, I, I guess so I, I don't really believe in him. Like, every time, because every time somebody brings it up, I'm like, nah, that's not real, whatever. Yeah. But it is like, I don't know. It's something in the in the back of my mind. But I know it's like not real. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that would be interesting if it was true, but yeah, the people who tell you generally have some sort of agenda or a desire for attention. I guess so. And it's like, I don't, I don't buy this, oh, <laughs> you true. know? Yeah, the, the most outlandish personalities are the ones that, because Shane Dawson was on the H3 podcast and he's definitely an attention seeker and he's like, no, oh my God, I saw not Shane Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a ghost. There was a demon in, in the recording, and he said my name, and he told me he knew I was gay. He knew everything I ever did, and he saw my grandma, and oh my god, like that. And it's like, you know, I don't think I believe you, Shane. Yeah, I don't think I believe you. Yeah, they do those recordings where they set up a, a recorder and it will pick up sounds. Yeah, um, and people are like, oh, it clearly says this, and it's yeah. a, it's called it's called priming. And, they and have I to put fell for that. Under it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. fell for that. Uh, not with ghosts, but with Thirteen Reasons Why. Okay. I posted a short clip. Of oh, I saw them. that. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, someone yelling. Uh, he has a gun, and it's like a background character. And the first time I heard it, I was like, "Oh, clearly that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. There could be nothing else that he's saying other than he has a gun." Well, then someone pulled the audio and just that channel of the background noise. And the guy says, oh, he just stepped outside. And I was like, I'm an idiot. I'm the <laughs> dumbest person who's Some, ever lived. Sometimes you hear he's got a gun. Sometimes you hear you get the word future and field trip confused. It's, it's just part of life, right? <laughs> oh, man. I Did you not hear future? Were you lying to me about I'm that? I'm telling you. Okay, so we should probably let the audience in on what's going on. Yeah, yeah. You made a video about um, Avengers, Avengers Infinity War. Infinity and War. you misheard one of the characters. Spider-Man. Uh, or a I commenter he told said, you you misheard. Yes. What you thought. I, so I thought Spider-Man, when uh, Iron Man said, hey, where'd you come from? And he said, uh, the future. Because I thought, oh, Doctor Strange sent him in the past. And I assumed it was five minutes from the future or whatever like he showed up late to the fight and dr strange is like hey we need your help five minutes ago and send him back or something along those lines right and the commenter said you're an idiot he said field trip which makes sense because he was on a field trip and they're they have the same amount of syllables and the same hard consonants so well, i was like oh i'm a, i'm a dummy it's been a while since i saw it but i know for a mm. fact that in that movie robert downey jr one of the characters says field trip and another character does say future. So both statements are said in the movie. Yes. And I know you Robert Downey Jr. You were on the air the space airplane, the spaceship says airplane. something about a field trip. <laughs> yeah. See, see this is a problem. I'm just I just say dumb things. It's a, uh, it's a human. We all do it. <laughs> but I you told me you heard Spider Man say future. I so went, I into went the back movie and knowing watched it. That this this dialogue would take place right yeah i knew somebody was going to say future or field trip and then and then in towards the beginning they say field trip and i was like okay it is field trip and then later in the movie they say something about the future and i was like they say both so uh i you know this guy you, you're putting a lot of stake in what this commenter said to you <laughs> i'll tell you and that's a big well, big rule number one rule is don't don't do that yeah that's a good point don't give them the power uh, <laughs> so the reason why I was so confused by it, it actually established a lot of my opinions of the movie was that one line. Okay. Was because it never came back. I'm watching it thinking, oh, Spider-Man's from the future. <laughs> and then they don't reference it again. I'm like, what is going on? Is he, is it, are, is that going to be like a Easter egg, like a little throwaway line okay. that's going to be used in the next one and okay. so i was like what is happening and they never the, the talk about it off. they never reference and it 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 like infected my brain it and got in there like for a, the other shoe to drop yeah okay and the other thing is the next movie deals with time travel so 
Oh, it does. If we find Spoilers. out, yeah. I thought oh, they were going to stay dead. <laughs> if we find out that Spider-Man in that fight was Spider-Man from the future, I am going to punch everyone I see that day. Yeah, no. Just just say, a fair warning. Say, <laughs> remember that guy's name, town. his YouTube username and go get him. I'm not even him. I'm just going to punch everyone. Okay. Anyone I see, I'm going to punch people out of joy. Your wife I'm like, I'm and not, family, you're going to punch them? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's okay. that's pretty run of the mill. It's That's generally out of self-defense, though. Sounds like my grandpa. <laughs> my daughter punched me in the face the other day because she got mad. Uh-oh. She's like, I'll punch you in the face. And uh, it was a big problem. That sounds like a big problem. Yeah, it's that Mexican blood. Mexican blood. Are you Hispanic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my California. mother's maiden name is Ortega. You can't really tell because I'm like almost translucent. A lot of, am. there are a lot of white Hispanics. I'm actually 25% Me too. Me- Mexicoli. And for we, uh, we had a kid, we could, ha- we could have another 25%. You and me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll work That's on how that, that I guess. Work, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, Cabin in the Woods. This took a weird turn. The point of Cabin in the Woods is it's taken horror which has been tired for, what, 20 years? Yeah. And it elevated time. it and uh, gave context where context didn't even need to be given, but in a really good way. Yeah. And it was just so much fun. And it's it's tough talking about something good because it yeah. it's you just get in a cycle of going, this is good and that's good. Cause yeah, I, they did this really I well. They did that really good. This was really fascinating. It's one of my favorite climaxes ever. It, literally every, I couldn't think of like a horror monster that they don't have in the movie. They have, mm. they've freaking What'd you think robots. of the merman? I the thought merman that was pretty. Was the best. <laughs> the way the blood creative. shoots out of the spout when he's the eating the guy. or whatever. Yeah. But the merman's Was that great. a merman though? Yeah, that was the merman. Cause that was, no, no, I, no, I know it was. But I'm saying, was that a merman? And Be- in hor- it, in, ugh, I guess so, because it's horror. Because it just looked like a a fish with arms. Like yeah. it didn't look like a man. Like you think of a mermaid, right? Half fish, half woman. You think about that creature, and I, I would not call that a merman. I guess not, but it was a perfect payoff, I think. Yeah, yeah. It definitely... I was so invested to see the merman yeah. when all the things were released. I was like, oh, where is it? Who is it? You know, they built this up and yeah. they never showed it uh, up until that point. And I was like, you oh, got a unicorn stabbing a guy with its horn, which I yeah, that was pretty didn't funny. think I'd ever see in my life. But <laughs> that's great. It had everything. They covered all their bases. I love how they, they make a bigger deal out of like Japan because <clears throat> Japan is like, Sort of number two, I guess, in the yeah. the horror game. Yeah. And I love it. All the, the little girls are around and they're like, we put Kiko's <laughs> evil spirit into this frog. And, and they're all singing and cheering. And he's just yelling at him at the screen. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> How hard is it to kill nine-year-olds? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. The movie yeah. is just no, great. I, I really enjoy watching this movie with the idea that every horror movie takes place in this universe. Yeah. And then when you watch other horror movies, it's like, oh, they're getting gassed. They're getting... Yeah. 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 yeah, um, I think one of the things that makes this movie so compelling, so interesting, is we have lost the moral of a story kind of throughout all movies, right? You look at action movies, it's like just generic action for the sake of action. You look at horror movies, just kind of generic. They just... You have to hit these things and they don't have a point to tell the story. Sci-fi is kind of the only thing that really has a point, has something to say. Like, oh, be careful of machines because they'll, you know, yeah, take okay. over and ruin things or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, the, a Quiet Place is a great one. The moral or the, is the point the, is, is it, no, 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 uh, it's a, it's a, a great, good. Yeah, I got what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Point. Not necessarily a great movie. Uh, it's it's saying how far would you go as a parent to you know wh- how far would you go as a parent right that's that's what's compelling about that movie not the aliens not the not all the why didn't they live next to the waterfall 
all that stuff is kind of <laughs> dumb. But <laughs> the <laughs> when they they play with the idea of how far would you be willing to go to protect your kids, to protect your family, it's like that stuff is really gripping. You look at a lot of other movies and they don't have that. There's not a there's they're not saying anything. And so you watch it and you're just kind of like I that I just spent 2 hours. I didn't I didn't it didn't challenge me. It didn't make me question anything. Yeah, you're but right when, about that. When you have a, a movie like this, that's a commentary of saying like, hey, these are bad guys. <laughs> They're not doing anything. They're not saying anything. It really resonates because it's an underlying thing I think everyone has when they watch these movies of like, why is this? It should be scary, but it's it's not. I don't get it. Or it should be interesting, but it's really not. And when you have this uh, cabin in the woods, when you have American Vandal, it's like, hey, it's like a magic trick that they're doing over and over. It's there. You know, when someone saws a woman in half, there's no danger. You talk there's about no, that a lot, the magic trick over and over. Yeah, well, because it. It's, it's fitting. You, it fits. Yeah. You, you The first time you see a magic trick, you're blown away, right? Yeah. You're, you're amazed. You're like, well, how did that happen? Then you see it again and you're like, oh, that's. That, it's a whatever like I, I've, I've seen that before it doesn't it doesn't have replay value right like a music or you know a story you can go back to when it's a, a trick when it's a it there's no no meat to it it's just it tricks you into thinking something else you know you, then you get it gets old really quickly and i think horror is a good uh, analogy for that where it's they just do the same thing over and over and it's yes. all in a woman half just in a different color box. And you're like, really? Again? Yeah. I'm with you on that. Like when you watch every horror movie is just a jump scare factory now. Oh, that's the worst kind too. Yeah. The jump scare? Yeah. The jump scare is terrible. Because it's not scary. It's startling. I'm My good. kids could do that to me. You yeah. Know, they don't need a they don't need to establish a world to jump out behind a curtain and, you know, make me startled yeah they don't need a 50 million dollar budget to spook you <laughs> yeah that, and so yeah the ring the ring was kind of the one that was the last effective jump scare movie that i can think of i like the conjuring i thought the conjuring was eh, i don't know if i've seen uh maybe i saw that one it's fun the know. first one it's like um it's not too it's it's pretty reliant on jump scares but it's got fun stuff going on, you know, the demons throwing people around the room and pulling people by their hair and stuff. Yeah. It's fun to watch, but I've gotten to the point where I can literally count down to the jump scare. And oh, then yeah. Everyone it, around in the theater is screaming, and I'm like, Sh- shut up. How yeah. do you not know? Anytime you see a mirror, oh, especially yeah. a medicine cabinet, yep. it's like, oh, I wonder what's about to happen. Yep. And it always happens. Yeah. The best horror movies yeah, horror. are the ones where they go to the mirror and nothing happens in the mirror. But they still do the the strings. They still try to get you with the sound. They'll they'll build the tension with the sound and it'll it'll build, 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 and the person will close it and nothing. They're like, ha, subverted you. And then generally the person's in the bathtub. Cabin in the Woods had a mirror, a one way mirror. Didn't use it for spooks. That's true. Yeah. The, and also yeah, had a never scene came where, back, did it? Where she made out with a a taxidermy. That was so head. gross. <laughs> that was so gross. I oh love man. That. Oh, that no, reminds I, me like, of. Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen Human Centipede two? Did I see the first one? I definitely didn't see the second one. I might have watched the first one. All right. Well, the guy who is the main, the main big star of Human uh-huh. Centipede two, the guy that creates the Human Centipede. Uh, he only got the part because the director, Tom Six, as he was auditioning for this role, the director told that actor to rape a chair in the audition room. And he did. To rape a chair? Yeah. So this actor... R-A-P-E? Raped. All right. Raped a chair at the audition to get the role. And it watching her make out with the dead wolf's head <laughs> reminds me of that. Uh, it was impressive level com- of commitment. You could see she was she put her mouth over its tongue, yeah, and uh, you could see the tongue wiggling, and she's walking away from it, pulling hairs out of her mouth, <laughs> and 
it's so that's gross. a great scene. It's it sticks with it you. is. Yeah, uh, it can't be a real taxidermied wolf, right? That had to be a just oh, yeah. a, a prop. Peter would have a feeling that... if it was real. <laughs> no way, it's it's real. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's so gross. Could you do that? Could you do that for one of your videos? Easily, you think you'd have easily. Yeah. I'll do it with my living dog. You just want, give, oh, me there you go. give me a reason. Give me a reason. Oh man. Um, yeah, I was gonna say something, but I forgot what it was. Go for it. Oh, that's a that's a that's some quality podcasting there. But this is let me let me interrupt, stop the conversation, and then not okay. say anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very naturalistic. It feels real. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it happens in yeah. real life. Yeah, especially. With hang on, hang on, hang on. Just listen to silence for a minute. Um, yeah, no, it. Cabin in the Woods. I definitely recommend, uh, especially if you are exhausted of horror movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you they find them boring, I think you will enjoy this. You probably enjoy it if you love horror movies too. But I, do people still love horror movies? Is that still yeah, a thing? Yeah, I do. Yeah, even though, but like, I, do you get excited in October when they have like fifteen different ones coming out? Mm. Like, what good franchise is going on right now? There's not any, right? Saw. It's it's Stan so, Saw. Is, are they doing another Saw. one? I hope I, there's another one this year because the last one was yeah, it was, it was kind of fun. That the, what was that one? Jigsaw. That was what it was. Yeah, called. if we can get a Jigsaw um, too. I, I haven't seen that. I've seen all the other ones. And I love I like them yeah. for what they are. Yeah. You know, like not for the the horror like the uh the uh, brutality of them cuz that that part kind of gets boring, but the 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 concepts they play with of like you know, how far are you willing to go to survive? Are you willing to, you know, saw off your leg and all this stuff to uh to make it out are you willing to brutalize someone else for yourself like those questions are really interesting yeah and they stopped doing that like oh yeah after the second but one there i there's a few things that i just watch because it's it's just like i'm like i'm just gonna turn my brain off i'm not gonna question why or what they're doing i'm just gonna watch it and that's one of them okay i i i I just think the Saw movies are dumb fun, and I like. Yeah, that's what I mean. And as soon as you think about what any how any of it works <laughs> with the rest of the franchise, it the whole, it all falls apart, and I love that. Well, it all it all really dropped the ball when it became a cop drama. As soon as that happened, it was like it kind of lost the heart of the what made it interesting. I guess. So. And they they kind of only did that because. Dan, uh, Donald Glover was a cop in the first one. Oh like, yeah, I don't think it, it would have ever really been a cop drama if it wasn't for that. And he didn't have to be a cop. No, he's too old for that. No. <laughs> well, anything else about Cabin in the Woods? Uh, I would say, if somehow you haven't seen it, it's ruined for you now. But it's oh, one yeah. of my favorite movies. I've seen it four times. We've talked about before. I don't like to rewatch movies. Yeah. Every time I like it just as much, and that's rare. Mm. I love the movie. Um, it's it's literally one of my favorites. So, yeah, I got a great. I can do your outro for you if you want. All right, let's do it. Do you have anything left to say? Um, I'm good. All right. Well, with with all that out of the way, thanks for having me on, Alan. Thank you. Always a pleasure. I hope to come back one day and talk about something that's the not the ridiculous six, six. <laughs> but as for cabin in the woods now you can finally say that i've seen that oh you got it wrong and i even have a uh, slate a clacker you said you said it wrong no Ren. We, no we i don't didn't i've there's no i've in this show well there should it's, be fix it i know fix it's just it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it anymore. I kind of hate it. Now you can finally say, I seen that. There you go.